what we're looking at here is the cross section of a coronary artery. Now, just to orientate ourselves, first of all, this area in the middle is the lumen. Now, you can see there's some greenish stained material here. These are actually uh, the red blood cells that happened to be in the artery when it was sectioned. So, central part here, the lumen. Now, coming out, we see a bluish layer here. And I think you can see this runs all the way round about the lumen of the vessel. If I just move that up and down. Up to the top of the lumen there. We can see that this area is running all the way round about the vessel. And this is the tunica intima, the inside layer. The intima. Now this intima is uh, fairly thick because as I mentioned on the introduction to this microscopy this patient was uh, fairly old at the time of death and uh, the intima shows considerable thickening and the younger person it would be uh, narrower than this but the lumen itself is, is clear, it's intact there is no evidence of atheromatous plaques intruding into the lumen of the vessel now mo moving further out we have the lumen we have the intima and here we have the tunica media this layer here this is the elastic layer made up of elastin and collagen but largely made up of smooth muscle and again we can see that this surrounds the artery forming the coat all the way around. And finally the third layer, the outside layer here, is the adventitia. This is outside the artery altogether here. And this is the adventitia, the tunic adventitia. The outside layer, largely fibrous tissue. So adventitia, media, intima, lumen. So a normal coronary artery, no evidence of coronary arterial disease, some intimal thickening, but no intrusions into the lumen, leaving a patent lumen for blood to throw, flow through to the appropriate area of myocardium, which is perfused by this vessel. Now here we're looking at another coronary vessel of a similar size to the one we've just looked at and initially it's very hard to see anything at all so uh, let's point out some of the structures to orientate ourselves on this vessel now what we're looking at on the outside here at the pointer there is the adventitia and then there we're looking at the media and there we're looking at the intima. So again we're looking at the wall, the cross-sectional wall of a vessel, adventitia, media and intima. Now this area here would normally be lumen but in this case this is all atheroma which has virtually completely clogged up the entire lumen of this vessel. So here we're looking around the outside of the coronary artery, down. And actually, if we, when we get to the bottom here, we can actually see that there is in fact a lumen. This is it here, this white area. All the rest, all of this here, is atheroma. And this is made up of different things. It's largely cholesterol. Here, for example, there are some crystals of cholesterol, crystalline cholesterol. Here, the purple stain is uh, collagen, which is from fibrous tissue. But the main thing is the whole lumen, or what should be lumen, here, is completely filled up, or virtually completely filled up, with atheroma. This artery shows very advanced, very severe, atherosclerosis. So instead of having all of this area all up here 
the blood to go through. We've only got this tiny area here. So clearly any tissues distal to this artery are going to be very ischemic. There'll be myocardial ischemia, secondary to coronary artery atherosclerosis. And in addition, although it's far, rather hard to see on this, we could see it in longitudinal section, it would be better. But on this, the lining of the lumen is also irregular. And that irregular lining will cause blood turbulence and possible thrombosis. And it wouldn't take a very big blood clot to completely occlude what is left of this lumen, resulting in infarction. So a virtually totally clogged up atheromatous pathological coronary artery.